Kevin Durant's got like a body meant for basketball, but also the skills to back it up. He's kind of like, you know, when you see like a really tall person in life with really long arms and you're like, hey, do you play basketball? And they're like, no, no, I'm totally uncoordinated. Because of course you are built like a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Attract customers to your business. Make a splash at your next presentation. Keep grandma company. But not KD. This dude has a jumper like Mike and a body like Kareem. But even with championships and finals MVPs, this man gets so much disrespect. Kevin Durant should be a top 10 all-time player when it's all said and done, but some people are never going to rank him that high. This video, though, explains why KD's legacy is so hurt, because he's just too good. Yo, it's Casey, this is AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells and all that stuff. I got the hair going on still until the end of the NBA Finals. And if you're a member of this channel, either on Patreon or on YouTube, I need you to go look at the community tab, please, because I have a special members only announcement. The rest of you will hear about it soon. Okay, first off, I hate when people say that Kevin Durant joined a 73 win team, therefore his two championships don't mean anything. Do those same people not count those championships for Steph Curry? No. They just hate the fact that KD joined a super team when actually he's the reason they won those two championships. Also, KD would not have even been there if they had beat the Cavs the year before. Yes, KD acknowledged he only went to the dubs because they lost in 2016. Had they won that game, seven, against LeBron, KD would not have joined a back-to-back -back champ. Draymond Green knows it. If Kevin Durant was the consolation for us to lose, thanks for that loss, and we champs this year. And don't take my word for it, take Richard Jefferson's word, who is on the Cavs, and he explained how important KD actually was to those teams. If Golden State brought back the same team in 2017, we would have dominated. Yeah, dominated. Instead, they were smacked in five games because of Kevin Durant. And he didn't just average over 35 points, eight boards, five assists a game. He was finals MVP because his gravity allowed everyone else to do their thing. Now, I will admit in 2018, the Warriors would have won even without Kevin Durant because Cleveland was so banged up. But if everyone was healthy, KD would have been the difference. Without Durant, there's no Warriors dynasty. There is a Cavs dynasty. But some people are never going to acknowledge that because they hate him. Those people wanted Kevin Durant to go to his own team. So fine, he goes to Brooklyn. And what happens? Kyrie Irving wants to go. So does James Harden. Oh wait, another super team. And that is the excuse that the haters are going to use to not respect Kevin Durant's legacy. But if you look at NBA history, a lot in recent history, stars wanna play with other stars, especially with Kevin Durant. He is so good, it attracts other elite talent to play with him. Players as good as KD are always gonna be on a super team because that's how it works. KD is a victim of his own success and it'll always give the haters a reason to call him a cupcake or discredit everything that he's done. I guarantee when people look back, if the Nets don't win any more chips, people will look at his two rings and his two finals MVPs and they'll go, oh, but if he was really a top 10 all-time player, he would have won more. Saying he should have won more based on a narrative ignores all the other factors. Because in the moment, we all will acknowledge the other factors. Like, oh, this year, Kyrie and James Harden were injured. And if KD's foot was two inches back, the Nets would have won game seven. But when people look back, all they're gonna see is the L, and they're gonna say, oh, he should have won more if he's really that great. Literally, he is so talented that we're gonna expect so much from him that we're not gonna consider the other factors later on. Zero championships in OKC with Russell Westbrook and James Harden? Forget the Miami Heat super team with a prime LeBron James. If KD was a top 10 all-time player, he would have won at least a chip with those teammates in OKC. But the same people who say that probably have Wilt Chamberlain in their top 10. In fact, if you go look at ESPN's top players of all time, Wilt is number six with only two chips and one finals MVP. But why is he there? 
because Wilt was a physical freak that broke every stat known to man. He's basically there cause he's a freakish talent. Well, Kevin Durant is a freakish talent and a better player than Wilt Chamberlain. A lot of you are gonna say in the comments I know, oh, you can't compare them because they're in two different eras. Well, there's one thing that goes across every era and that's clutchness. Wilt was a beast in the regular season, but not in the biggest games. For his career, Wilt's playoff scoring actually went down from 30 points per game in the regular season to 22 in the postseason. The greatest players don't do that. Kevin Durant goes from 27 points in the regular season to about 30 points in the playoffs. And once again, don't trust me, trust an NBA player. This quote is from Rick Barry who played in Wilt's era. And he said, I'll say what most players feel, which is that Wilt is a loser. He is terrible in big games. He knows he's gonna lose and be blamed for the loss, so he dreads it. And you can see it in his eyes. And anyone who's ever played with him will agree with me, regardless of whether they'll admit it publicly. When it comes down to the closing minutes of a tough game, an important game, he doesn't want the ball. He doesn't want any part of the pressure. It's at these times that greatness is determined, and Wilt doesn't have it. There is no way you can compare him to a pro like Bill Russell or Jerry West. These are clutch competitors. And I'm not saying that KD is Bill Russell or Michael Jordan late in games, but he's not afraid of the big moment. He will take and make big shots. If Durant wasn't this good, we would not demand this much from him. And he would get the exact same pass that Wilt Chamberlain gets. But the one thing I will admit about KD, and I've said it on multiple videos on this channel, he's got his haters because he is a villain, and that is his fault. It's not just that he joined the 73 win Warriors, he's kind of a dick. He is so sensitive, especially on social media, and he holds so many grudges against like everybody. And I think it's really easy to like people who smile all the time, like Steph Curry or Boban, but the opposite is true also. All KD does is frown, and it literally hurts his legacy. This guy is so sensitive that he left the Warriors to please everyone else. KD knows that you guys aren't gonna give him respect, so he actually left Golden State in a dynasty to try to earn everyone else's respect by winning one on his own. That was the worst decision he could make. He was rewriting record books. Duke could have been one of just three players to win three finals MVPs if he got another, and his best chance was in Golden State. Instead, he left to try to please everyone else. His legacy would have been so much more if he would have stayed. I thought people would actually acknowledge now how important KD was after the Warriors like went to crap when he left, but those same people act like those two rings don't count.